Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MLB slate for this evening. This will be the main slate. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday evening. I'll be doing this solo again. I uh, thought we did a pretty good job of breaking everything down last night. Um, we were able to get a good pairing with DeGrom and Ryan, and you got the right <laughs> hitting combinations. Uh, you did pretty well. Um, but more to the point, we were able to identify different options of, of how to how to build. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through again game by game, and then we're also going to run a Saberson build and see if it matches kind of, you know, uh, what we think instinctively. Um, okay, so first of all, Baltimore versus Washington, you have kind of a bullpen game on one end, and then you have Patrick Corbin on the other. Um, first of all, I, I will say that Patrick Corbin does rate to be a good point per dollar play on the slate. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, the way this kind of slate shakes out, I have one, two, three, I have five pitchers that are just really the only five pitchers I would consider playing. And Corbin is one of them at 5,300. And, and it opens up quite a bit of salary um, to, to get some expensive hitters, if that's what you want to do. Um, now, again, Corbin has certainly, uh, taken some lumps but then again he's also every once in a while put up a pretty good game and at 5300 um this is not this is not the worst play i've ever played um now with that said um i imagine that baltimore is going to rate to be a very strong play as well and they are i mean they rate to be the top value play on the whole slate um and this is you know such as the you know such as the <laughs> the vagaries of the of, of GPP uh, uh, daily fantasy sports. You, know, you can have a really good play pitcher and also a really good play on the other side. So I think Baltimore does rate to be a very strong play from a value perspective. And yet I do believe that uh, Patrick Corbin on the pitching side rates to be a good point per dollar play as well. Um, with respect to early ownership, I, I don't have Corbin garnering that much of it. So that that end of the spectrum, you know, that that end of the discussion, I guess, uh, certainly it seems more, you know, GPP ish, like to play him at low ownership than to play Baltimore, who will probably be. I would imagine very highly, owned, if not the highest owned uh, value piece, at least on the slate. I mean, I got the Dodgers and the Yankees that are going to get really high owned in general, but after them, it looks like Baltimore is the next highest. So. I think Corbin could be extremely good leverage against that. Um, so that, that that's pretty appealing to me, actually. So let's just for now put him in and see what else we come up with. So we have Bobby's big uh, call from the last time was uh, Drew Rasmussen. He put up a 30-piece at the Yankees. Ten strikeouts, no walks. I mean, that's no joke. He's got a one, one whip. Guy's bringing it. Um, now, with that said, I'm not, I don't seem to be getting to him for some reason. Um, I don't, maybe, do I even have him projected at all? Let me just take a look. Um, I, I'm going to have to take another look at this because I find it hard to believe that I wouldn't get at least some of him. Let me just see pictures. Yeah, I don't even have him projected yet. So uh, we will, uh, we will, oh, no, I do. I just don't have him projected very well. Um, I guess that's because it's against, uh, it's against, uh, against Toronto. But hey, there's no dispute that he's been bringing it, but I don't, I'm not going to get to him today at 9,600. And Stripling, he's not one of my top five, so I will just kind of leave it at that. I have five pitchers I want to play, and he's not one of them. Um, with respect to the hitting, um, I feel as though both I feel as though both pitchers are good enough to keep me off of the hitting, but let me just double check the way the numbers play out. Yeah, I have Toronto rated I mean, seventh, but that's, that's, it's much worse than that, considering they're fighting with other, you know, similar raw stack ish type teams like the Dodgers and the Yankees, who rate just much higher than them. Um, and I'm not getting any Tampa, I'm not getting any Toronto anywhere. So for me, this game is probably going to be a pass. So you have Nelson Cortez against, uh, wow, against Bello at 6,600. 
Um, if you play Bello, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yell at you, but the numbers certainly don't don't bear that out. Uh, let's just put it that way. I mean, he does has shown flashes, but yeah, you know, <laughs> it's yeah, Fenway against the Yankees. It's not, it's not, not easy. Um, how many home runs is Judge hit now? I mean, like every single day, it looks like he's hit two home runs. What is he? Has he hit fifty five yet? He's got fifty seven home runs. I mean, it's a little obscene. Anyway, uh, I'm not getting to any of uh, Bello, and I'm not getting to any of um, of Cortez either. Uh, however, uh, as I just alluded to, with respect to the stacks, I do have the Yankees as rated number two overall, um, just on raw points, and I do have them highly owned. So, you know, you want to do that, that's fine, but I would make sure to that's the type of stack that you'd want to play with, with Patrick Corbin anyway, you know, a stack that you can get to judge and Stanton or whatever, but um, not uh, and not be too chalky. So you have a, a low pro price guy in Corbin who also low priced. So he reduce, he releases value and he's going to be wrong. So that's, that's a pretty good combination. Uh, and I'm not getting looks like to any Boston, regardless of which metrics you use. So, for me, it's going to be the Yankees. Uh, and, and the Yankees, let me just go over who I'd be wanting to play. If I could, um, I would be pulling to play Aaron Judge, who probably should be 8K at this point. Judge, Stanton, uh, if you can get to – well, let's just put, put in all the guys I'd want to play. Uh, Glaber Torres, 3,900. And then – these are all righties. So just just to caution you, you got to play the two K Florial again. Florial again, and then either Donaldson or Marwin. You can go back to Marwin. That's fun. So I mean, you could certainly do this. Uh, and so the Yankees are definitely one of the top options. All right, so. Cubs against uh, the Mets. Well, we live in this world where where Doug Peterson is is not only the number one rated value on the slate, but by a pretty sizable margin, and his ownership is following in fine style at about forty percent. At least that's what I have right now. Um, it's kind of rough, is it? I don't know. And this is one where I, I prefer to not have any instincts because I would just look at the number. I'd say, okay, I'll just lock him in and just be done with it. But I mean, who the hell is David Peterson anyway? I mean, at Miami, he, he mustered up a, 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 a you know, a, a, a saucy 12 fantasy points home against Washington, a nice crisp 12.6. Okay. He had the one good game against Colorado, but then, a, a styling 10 fantasy points, then a 20, and then what are you pitching? An inning? No, he pitched. He got through one inning. Negative. Sandy. What is I don't I don't even get any of this. So I, I don't know. I, I hope I I hope I just don't play him. It just can I can you really just trust the numbers that much? I guess so. I guess that's what we do this for. But I don't know. I, I, the whole thing, the whole thing stinks. It just does. Yeah, and 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 the Cubs are not great, but 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 I don't know. I just got a, I got a bad feeling about this one. That's the best I can describe it. From a from a data driven guy like me, I would I would I would listen. I don't know. I don't, he's going to show up in most of my lineups, and I'm probably going to force him out. Uh, again, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but the theme is transparency, and there's just no way I'm playing a, a over. I'm not going to be with the field at 40% David Peterson. It's just not going to happen. Unless there's no other options. I mean, you really, you really going to convince me that he's that much of a better play than, than Corbin? Maybe he is. I don't know. We'll, we'll get back to it, I guess. 
Um, all right, Mets. Uh, the Mets look like they're in play for me. Mm, nope. Not getting to them raw, not getting to them in value, so they're off the board. Uh, and the Cubs, oh, do I have that in me? Mm, no, not quite. So, you know, before I forget, as I'm looking through my metric over here, um, I, I, I skipped over the Washington part of that first game just because I don't really like to deal with, with the, whatchamacallit, with the bullpen games. But they do rate to be good values. Uh, maybe when we go live a little later, we'll talk about that some more. All right. So Kansas City against Minnesota, you have Sonny Gray against Zach Grinke. And Sonny Gray rates to be uh, a pretty strong play. Uh, he rates to be within the top five. Um, I had David Peterson at number one, and then I have this basically a four-way tie for, for second through fifth. And, and, and Corbin was one of them, and Sonny Gray is another. And Sonny Gray, though, is going to be – I have him at – Projecting about 35% ownership uh, against Kansas City. Um, I guess on a slate like this, you have to play somebody. Um, so that's why some of these guys are coming in so highly owned. 35% um, Sonny Gray. I, mean, that's, I think I'd rather do that for some reason than, than Peterson. Um, neither of them really are that great bits of chalk, if you want to know the truth. But and that's uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. And Zach Granke, I mean, the guy's a, the guy's a magician. He's a total magician. Like, look at this last game. <laughs> look, look, look at this game. This is a perfect game. Pitched six innings, six hits, one run, only two strikeouts. You know, he just he just doesn't give up anything. Somehow, he's a, he's a freaking wizard. Um, but I'm not playing him in G, in, in 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 DFS just because he has no strikeout upside. Um, let's take a look at the stacks in this game uh, on raw points. I, I, neither of these guys are going to show up, but let's take a look at value. Um, can you get to Kansas City or Minnesota? Yeah, Minnesota is showing up um, as a good play. A good play? Nah, I, yeah, I have them fourth, fourth best value. I have Baltimore number one. I have Washington number two. And then I have Minnesota tied with another team for basically third, third, fourth. And then the Yankees will be fifth. So definitely Minnesota is in play. I, I have a feeling they're going to be somewhat popular. Uh, people, they always like to, to, to pick on – they always like to play hitters against Granky for some reason. He never ends up anything. But the people like to do it because they always project like they're good plays. Um, so, you know, they're going to project for me like a good play as well, so I may as well go over it. I guess the top plays from Minnesota would be – um, this would be Miranda. Would be uh, Ursula. Or Ursula at twenty six hundred. Then there would be uh, maybe Nick Gordon at only three k. Then either Garlic, Cave, Arias, or Correa. Like, if you were just playing for raw points, it would be Correa, for example, and Arias. But you can't play both Arias and Miranda, so that's not going to work. So Arias would have to be placed by either Cave or Garlic. So if you put in Garlic, for example, this is kind of what a Minnesota stack would look like. And in this type of build, you don't even need to play Corbin. You could probably... You know, not the, you could probably double pay up. You could probably play Burns and 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 you could play your stupid Peterson, <laughs> or you could play. You you can go for the uh for at least the um the correlation, you know, and do this. And you could do this like obviously really easily here. You could play like Judge and Stanton. You know what I mean? Like this is so. Uh, and that's I guess part of the reason why Sunny Gray is going to be highly owned. I mean, you make this whole thing work. Um, all right, so Minnesota, I think. Is very reasonable. Um, and I'm not really getting to Kansas City too much. Uh, and then you get to uh, uh, St. Louis, uh, Milwaukee, and that's where you get to Corbin Burns. Uh, and Corbin Burns is certainly, you know, one of the top five overall values. 
Um, he, I full faded him on a small slate in his last start. The, the, the thought being that there was something to his last three starts. And uh, I hope you just see what happened. That's a good thing, right? If you full fade him, you want him to score 45. You know what I mean? Like you don't want him to, <laughs> you don't want him to score like 25 and beat you anyway. I mean, you're either right or you're wrong. It may as well just have him score the 45. So. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with him. Uh, and it's obviously a strong play. St. Louis is not the easiest matchup in the world, but uh, you prefer to throw righties against them. And I can't see any real reason, especially if I'm not too into Peterson, I can't see any real reason to not play Burns if you want to know the truth. So uh, he's going to be – how is he not going to be the highest-known guy on this? Team? I mean, I currently have David Peterson at 40%. And then a lot of these, at, at, and some of these others, like in the low 30s, I have Corbin Burns at 30%. I can't, I don't see a world where he's not the highest known pitcher. So keep that in mind. Um, but that's what I would like. Uh, that, that's my opinion. I mean, how do you not, how is he not the highest? Well, we'll find out, I guess. Um, let's take a look at the stacks um, in this game. From a raw stack perspective, I actually have St. Louis as like the worst play on the slate. Um, because obviously they're against Milwaukee, uh, against Burns. Do I have Milwaukee rated high? No, not at all. I have Milwaukee rated very poorly, actually. And as far as value goes, pretty much the same thing. So well, I guess the one guy I didn't go over is Wainwright. Um, he, I don't have him projecting well at all. So if he's going to garner some ownership, I guess that's a good thing. I suppose um, I'll, I'll definitely have no problem fading him. Uh, let me just see real quick before I open up my big mouth. It's too late. Um, but yeah, I have Wayne right way down the list. I am well below these other top five. Um, yeah. So for me, it's um, Burns and, and, and nothing. And again, to Oakland and Texas, you have JP Sears against uh, Dane Dunning. And J.P. Sears, again, is just not a guy that's ever going to go more than six innings. Um, not ever, but just right now. So he's not really showing up for me, but Dane Dunning is. I mean, Dane Dunning is showing up as just as good as any of these other guys uh, from a value perspective. I have him in part of my top five between Peterson, Dunning, uh, Corbin, Gray, and Burns. And if I'm not going to really be that thrilled with, with Peterson, I think Dunning's a perfectly good play uh it's home against oakland i mean let's go this, this looks good to me um with respect to the stacks in here obviously neither of these guys are going to show up in particularly good um whatchamacall uh, raw points plays but wondering value wise yeah i am getting texas as uh, as a good play uh they have them third best value basically tied with minnesota for third, fourth best value. So I think Texas is in play. We'll get to those guys in a minute. Then it's kind of a drop down to um, to Oakland, but not that much. I mean, I think Oakland is totally reasonable against Dunning, but 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 I think Texas is the stronger side here. So just for fun, let's let's take a look at the at the Texas guys and see who we we want to be playing. Um, well, I would start with Nathaniel Lowe, I guess. Although he's is he lefty righty righty lefty he is lefty lefty but that's, that's who's showing up for me I guess and then there's uh, uh, I imagine Seeger but he's not showing up as a particularly good value here yeah see this is the problem they're showing up as good values but not the greatest actually they're showing up as okay so let's put these guys in Marcus Simeon forty nine hundred I think we can afford all of this if that's what you really want to do um, Seeger fifty two hundred you have uh, Garcia, 4,700. And then you have, uh, so did I put in Simeon, Lowe, Seeger, Garcia. I actually have Jung as the fifth. So, and you play Texas along with this. You play Dunning with this for some kind of sneaky correlation. You can play Burns like really, really easy. So I think Texas is a pretty good, pretty good play today. 
And then you go to the last game, you have the Dodgers in Arizona, and you have uh, Zach Davies for Arizona and Emma Grove for the Dodgers. Naturally, I'm not getting into either of these pitchers. Um, and unsurprisingly, I have the Dodgers as oh, my number one overall stack. Well, my number one raw point stack on the slate. Um, and they're also going to be pretty highly owned. I have them rated very similarly to the Yankees with respect to overall upside and uh, ownership. Um, uh, but with respect to value, have the Dodgers a little worse than the Yankees? I see a decent amount worse. Um, but, you know, this is uh, obviously a really strong play. And if you wanted to play the Dodgers, I would – play uh, Freeman would be certainly someone then there'd be uh, Mookie Betts and all I'm doing by the way I'm looking to see who shows up in both my value rankings and the raw point rankings to see who makes this kind of like must have list so Turner Freeman Betts and then either Trace Thompson Gallo Justin Turner or, or Will Smith depending on how much you want to spend. Um, so who Gallo, you can get him for 3,300. You know, and, and you can get all these guys in pretty easily. You know, if you play something like Dunning, you know, if you, if you start going messing around and playing, you know, even if you play, play Peterson, it's a little harder. You know, that's why the Dunning play kind of makes a little sense here to me. Um, and obviously, if you want to be real, real sneaky, you could play like Gray and Peterson and open up a little more. But I don't know, man. I, 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 think, I think the Burns is something. I, I think that's something you really want to do if you can. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So let me just kind of recap as far as pitching goes. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Um, you know, Peterson looks like the best play. Followed by, for me, a, a combination of Dunning, Corbin, Gray, and Burns. Uh, but in reality, I think that Burns has, you know, is the guy I want to get in first. And then I have no problem doing stuff like fading Gray and playing something like Dunning and Corbin. So I guess, uh, but not that Dunning is going to be particularly low on either. By the way, I have him at twenty percent ownership. So if you if you want to if you want if you want the truth, I'll probably recommend something stupid like a Burns Corbin lineup because. You know, when it comes to stacks, you have Baltimore, who's definitely going to get ownership here. And I think you get some decent leverage with Corbin against that. Um, and with respect to, to stacks, I mentioned a couple of them, but just to review, Yankees, uh, Minnesota, um, Dodgers, Texas, those would, be the, those would be the teams that I actually went through, the players, so those would probably be the ones that I would like the most. And uh, that will do it. Uh, I hope to be live at like six tonight and we'll go over more of this. But until then, good luck.